you know, both players, if, they, uh, if they're winning, they're securing their spot, of course, in the top eight. Yep. If they're losing, we're going to have to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it, of course. And both of these trainers as well have their own support plushies as well with the Esper and the Alolan uh, Persian. That's it. In 20, so for Luca Carabelli, we have the 2023 Malmo Regional Top 16 in 2023 as well. The EUIC Top 16 2022, the World's Day 2 competitor and the 2018 Turn Special Event Champion. Absolutely winning an event uh, in Turin. Maybe back for another go. Hey, he might want to have this title back again after a few years. Just wanting to make sure, you know what? Keep my seat maybe warm. <laughs> I'm taking it back right now. Absolutely. And on the other hand, we have Adam Chefawi with the 2020, uh, 2023 Malmo Regional Top 32, 2023 Global Challenge Top 16, and the 2023 UIC Day 2. So a lot of recent results at the 2023 Global Challenge Top 16 as well. Just so, powerhouses, really. Absolutely. Those Global Challenges are really difficult. You only get a, a certain amount of games per day, and you have to do as well as you can because there's no coming back from that. It's really easy to fall into a little bit of a losing streak and yes. uh, you know lose your focus but getting top 16 is no easy feat in any of those uh, uh, those sort of events but great to see Adam with some some recent pedigree here and uh, converting that into great performance so far in Turin yes exactly both I'm just excited to see these plays as we have the teams on screen we have the Fluttermane the Amoongus Chiyu Keros Tinglu and Aras a team I really like piloting myself but something that I always want to mention this Fluttermane is the substitute set it's been quite relevant as well these past few days where substitute just forces your opponent to think if he if he's gonna substitute and then you have to double target with its with its huge speed that it has or are you just gonna be attacking into that protect? Absolutely, and of course, with uh, Amoongus running Riot this tournament, it does give you an opportunity to ignore those spores as well. But, uh, you know, sometimes you can go for the substitute, get attacked, and then get spored afterwards, but then your opponent has to put all of their resources into one place, and so that substitute on the Flutter main does force a lot of board positions as we see Adam's team on the field that Fluttermane Amoongus, Chi Yu, but I am Bundle, not a Gyarados this time, Screamtail and Annihilate. Yeah, a bit more of a, a another way to play the, the game as well. When the Screamtail, one of the few bonus that we have seen already take uh, a regional as well. This being a different set with the mm. booster energy boosting its speed, making sure that if you're ever going to attack into a Protect with a Choice Specs Pokemon, which has been quite popular, especially with Flutter Mains and such, to disable any moves that they want to go for the second time around, or even forcing a switch out that they have to do then as well. Just Screen Tail is an amazing sport, just with Encore Disable and just that dazzling for a little bit of damage. Encore Disable is just such a powerful strategy. If you can get it off, and especially with that booster energy, making it really, really speedy, uh, you get the opportunity to Encore a Pokemon into a move, then uh, disable that. We've already seen Adam do that on stream, I believe, yeah. uh, where there was a Pokemon, I think it was a Dragapult. Was, it was uh, a Dragapult, yes. was uh, struggling its way uh, through the game and uh, unfortunately not, uh, not living to tell the tale, uh, so to speak. But... Um, yeah, the, the, the combination of Screen Tail and Annihilate here I really like because the Annihilate wants a lot of space to be able to get those bulk ups off. Uh, yep. It wants to be able to, uh, you know, get those Rage Fists going and get those drain, pinch, uh, drain, drain Punches going as well to put it in a strong position in especially going into an end game. And Screen Tail gives it a lot of space to do that. Yes, exactly. As now, right now at the People for Home, you can be watching and voting. Who do you think might be the winner here of this game? We have uh, Luca on the left side and Adam Shefawi on the right side. So please feel free to vote right there as well. Now, both these players, both very accomplished. And I'm really looking forward to what is going to happen here. I would absolutely love to see uh, this, especially with the just slowly team that Luca has uh, to just suddenly turn one. You know what? Turn one, nasty plot. Start nasty plot. Like, <laughs> turn one. Just be some, instead of that slow game, just 
have a bit of fun. You know, like, sometimes, <laughs> like most of the time you'd be thinking, all right, play it safe, play it safe. Sometimes it's good to just do the complete opposite of that and just gaining that momentum into the, the next few turns of that game. It's all about that momentum that you mentioned there and getting a nasty plot, putting a lot of pressure on the field forces your opponent to play your game. Yeah. They have to really worry about all of the damage output from that Chi Yu. We've already seen in, in many examples where, say, something like a Choice Specs Chi Yu puts damage on turn one, and that's really difficult for your opponent to deal with because you you kind of feel like you're on the back foot yeah. uh, right from the start. And Nasty Proc kind of does that a turn later where it you know you have to have a turn to set up where your opponent can maybe maneuver around a little bit, but uh, 2 plus Chi Yu is nothing to... Uh, to ignore certainly as that Chi Yu is going to be on the field turn one alongside Fluttermane for Adam and it's the Gyarados and Ting Lu a little bit more of a defensive lead coming out from Luca. Yeah, Ting Lu has been working amazingly against this Chi Yu and Fluttermane leads because Ting Lu of course loaned all the special attack from all the Pokemon on the field and the Chi Yu is kind of nullifying that and you have the Ting Lu's a lot with the Assault Fest just being able to survive any sort of moves a bit better. Now, this thing Lu itself is a leftover set, so a Moonblast will still hurt quite a bit from this Fluttermane. Yeah, no Assault Vest to drop the damage of any Moonblast, but no Moonblast is going to be coming out this turn as the Fluttermane does retreat in favor of that Amoongus. Nice defensive switch there from Adam, and a double switch, in fact. The Iron Bundle joining the fray alongside its partner Amoongus as Ting Lu goes for that protect so nice uh, nice prediction there for adam as a thunder wave Ooh. goes into the iron bundle slot not the flutter main slot adam probably predicting that the amoongus would be taking that thunder wave but the iron bundle taking it makes a massive difference here yes exactly this is not a booster energy bundle but an iron bundle is still an incredibly fast thing being able to have make sure that there's some sort of speed control on that is a really good thing especially when it's thunder wave because you can get paralyzed you can just not move for a turn you your speed is lowered as well and it's quite good to have, I guess, this bundle with its focus edge, trying to make sure that you can be able to chip it down. And maybe if it's not able to move, you win-win, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And maybe the Chi Yu is going to be taking advantage of that coming into the fray. Uh, a double-double switch a here. Double, double but, switch. Uh, with with different, uh, different trainers opting for it in different turns. It's the Amoogus joining the field there and the Iron Bundle following up with a Freeze Dry, just doing a little bit of damage over onto that Chi Yu and a Pollen Puff not affecting that Iron Bundle since it's still at full HP. Yes, so um, a, good double, a good double switch here, just making sure that the Amoogus can't put anything to sleep like the Garros or the Ting Lu. Garros, of course, having that option to taunt, but if you Freeze Dry it, the sport was able to go freely into that Ting Lu. Look at seeing this switching in that regard. Adam rather not wanting having any damage on his iron ball, keeping it in sash attack, wanting to go for the pollen puff there. But yeah, maybe we might see a double double switch again. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe uh, these trainers have got to attack sometime as the Ting Lu joins the field in favor of that Amoongus, just dropping the power of both the Chi Yu on Lucas side of the field, but also that Iron Bundle, maybe trying to make sure that any Hydro Pump coming out from this Iron Bundle isn't going to be enough to knock out this fire type Chi Yu as a heat wave lands into both the Iron Bundle and the Chi Yu on Adam's side of the field and freeze dry going into the Ting Lu doing uh, a little bit more damage than I would have expected. Yeah, exactly. Ting Lu, of course, not being an assault vest version. You have the thing recently a bit more of a shift of a Ting Lu of less bulky to more the power type where they still be able to take little two, three strong moves, but then able to hit back just as hard with any like an earthquake or a payback like that. And we have seen that the Chi Yu is now on the Luka side is faster, of course, than the Iron Bundle thanks to that paralysis and still doing quite a bit uh, despite it now being neutral with the Chi Yu and the Ting Lu on the field.
Yeah, and, you know, the question here, I think, for both of these players, they both have access to Nasty Plot on their Chi Yus. The question is, is do you go for it this turn? Adam kicking off the turn with a Protect on Chi Yu, so not wanting to take any damage, but Chi Yu following suit on Lucas' side hey, of the twins. field. <laughs> and, uh, oh, another well, Protect here. So uh, some double switches, some double Protects, some very passive turns yeah. from both of these trainers here, trying to feel out their opponent and what they're, you know, going to be going for. Yes, and we saw Hydro Pump into that Chi Yu slot. And now you have the little game where you have that you have to play. Are you going to Hydro Pump again in that slot? Or are you rather going to freeze drive into, for example, a Ting Lu slot or Hydro Pump in a Ting Lu slot? Either way, it's kind of a hard game to play because a perfect Gyarados switch in for that Chi would be uh, exceptional because you take that Hydro Pump very well. But then again, Adam can just uh, say, oh no, now you know that I'm trying to go for that. Now I'm just going to shift my attention to that Ting Lu side and go for a freeze drive, for example, over there. But yeah, you have these games where you have to try to decide, am I switching, am I not switching, just to be able to deal as much damage as possible or take as much, a little damage as possible. And that's where the Ting Lu comes in and making sure that, you know, all the Pokemon on the field are taking a little bit less damage from all of these powerful Chi Yus and Iron Bundles there. Uh, you know, Luca does have a little bit of an advantage because of that Thunder Wave prediction in the early game. So if he wants to attack with his Chi Yu, he's definitely able to this turn. That's going to be a Heat Wave coming Ooh. out and it's going to be knocking out the Iron Bundle, but also catching that Amoongus on the switch in doing so much damage. Yeah, just choosing to opt to just attack Stomping Tandem into the uh, Amoongus, getting a little bit of chip with that Rocky Helmet, but very well played by Luca, just opting to just say no. I'm just gonna heat wave right now. Uh, I might switch. I might have a miss, but like I think heat wave is the play here for me to make. As the Fluttermane now comes in and does threaten both the Chiu and the Tinglu with a possible strong attack, because it's still that choice specs Pokemon, right? Exactly, and you know that Fluttermane is going to be putting on a lot of pressure. Probably going to be able to knock out the Tinglu here, but if it targets down that Chiu, probably not going to take a knockout. The the, the beads of ruin. Uh, it don't affect. It doesn't it affect, doesn't affect the Chi. Yeah, the, these Ting Lu, this Ting Lu and Chi Yu are kind of counteracting each other. Where the ability of Chi Yu and Ting Lu yeah. are only acting on, effectively acting on, on each, each other. other. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, one of those things where you just have to uh, really think for a second. Like, okay, yeah, this <laughs> is still working on you, even though you also have a rune ability. But we have the switch from the Chi Yu into that Gyarados, meaning uh, no more special, uh, no more special defense drops. Yes. Uh, effectively onto the Ting Lu itself and the switch from the Among Us getting that regenerated meaning the Chi Yu is coming back just to bring that special attack drop back at it again. Absolutely what a great switch in there from Adu making sure that he was going to be as powerful Ooh. as possible. Luca trying to take the uh, take the initiative there and remove Beads of Ruin from the field but Adam saying hang on a second I need Beads of Ruin to be able to maybe knock out that Ting Lu in yeah. one hit and especially with that Terra Fairy coming out from the Fluttermane is going to be putting now a lot of pressure onto the field. Will it be a Moonblast? It will be, and it's going to be going into that Protect. Yes, of course, Ting Lu, if you don't run a Soul Fest, perfect moment to run that Protect, and now getting a bit of that Leftovers recovery. A Moonblast plus, plus a Chi Yu next to you, it will probably kill the Ting Lu, definitely with the Choice Specs. And then add Moses top the, uh, of course, the Terra Fairy as well. So, Tinglu can't protect anymore. You can't switch your Tinglu out. Uh, your float main is locked into that Moonblast. And he, there's a uh, there's an Amoogus in the back, but no switches to Amoogus. Either way, just a Moonblast coming out into that Tinglu and taking a huge knockout on that regard. And meaning this Chi Yu now can go for an attack. Hopefully, maybe getting a Dark Pulse flitch onto this Gyarados. So this Gyarados can't do anything. Dark Pulse going in. And the no Thunder flinch. Wave goes through. No flinches from that Dark Pulse. Thunder Wave connects onto that Flutter main. It is going to be paralyzed in the speed interactions between all of these. Pokemon are going to be massive going into these final turns where Chi Yu from Lucas side of the field rejoins and is going to be now faster than that Fluttermane. Yes, uh, Thunder Wave of course lowering the speed by two, meaning even the Gyarados will be able to outspeed and Gyarados, uh, even though it is being played a bit more bulky, it still has that waterfall attack which will uh, certainly two hit KO a uh, 
Fluttermane as well. But we have the switch from the Fluttermane into the Among Us. Healing a bit thanks to that regenerate ability. And just going for the Nasty Plot if there's nothing really going into this TU. Meaning this TU can deal a massive amount of damage. He wave coming out does T the Q on the Mushroom. Uh, but the TU is still hanging on. And it's going to be a follow-up from that Gyarados coming out onto the field. It's a waterfall going to be going into that GU. It's enough to pick up the knockout. No plots going to be successful this game for Adam. Exactly. You can't always be plotting and uh, <laughs> expecting not to be hit there. But, yeah, meaning only the Fluttermane in the back, which is paralyzed, unfortunately, versus uh, almost a full team of... And there's still the Amogus. You really don't have one move to kill all of these Pokemon. Dazzling Gleam is nice, but then you have that Amogus that's still there, resisting the Dazzling Gleam, just being able to shrug it off. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, that's going to be very much an uphill battle for Adam. But I really like how Adam is acting in this moment. Uh, you can see him there on the screen. He's looking at his opponent's team sheet rather than looking yes. at what's going on in the game. Just letting that timer tick away. Uh, it's not going to change the outcome of the, this battle, but it could, taking the time to have a look and reassess what you're going to do for game two, make a big impact in what we see in the decisions that Adam needs to make to come back and take game two to force a game three. It's exactly as you said, like trying to think and reflect what happened, what could I have done, what is, what are the sets on the Pokemon, uh, what, uh, what can I do for the next set, taking that time to just readjust yourself, make sure that you are ready for that next game, that you are ready to not be in the flow of mind of your opponent, but just have your own flow and just being able to execute your plan to make sure that you are able to come as a victor on top in the next game. Absolutely. Lucas Cerebelli taking game one of round 14, putting himself in a prime position to take one of the next two games and launch himself with a fantastic X and 2 record into the top eight of the Turin special event. In the meantime, while both of these players are reflecting on where to, uh, what they want to do going into game two, Simon, what are you thinking that Adam needs to do to adjust in this matchup? Mm, it's uh, it's rough to see just take one plan because we have Lucas' thought process as well. I do feel like his plot main lead would have been fine, but it is that Ting Lu that's always just there, right? So I think just an uh, adaptation to go, for example, to the Annihilate instead. Annihilate seemingly uh, could could have done quite well, in my opinion, there. And uh, Screentail as a possible support with the Disable on core, because you're just able to make sure that no Thunder Waves are being able to come out. If you protect one, you can disable it. No mm. Spores are able to come out because you disable it. And if they don't go for Spore or something, you can encore uh, the, the Among Us itself into a move that they would rather not be in. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's one of those Pokemon that really allows Adam to get that support on the field. The Disable that you mentioned there could be really critical because I really do think, looking back at game one, that the Thunder Wave targeting on Lucas' side of the field was absolutely on point. And then in the end game where we saw that the Waterfall came out rather than the Thunder Wave that could have been a potential option for uh, Luca in that turn actually just ended up going into the, uh, the Waterfall into the Chi Yu and picking up the knockout. So I really like how Luca played that. And uh, if Adam can do something about that, maybe with the screen tail, maybe with that disable that you mentioned, yep. maybe bringing that Annihilate to disincentivize yes. the Gyarados to come into the fray in the first place, that could be, uh, that could really change the flow of this battle. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Because the Gyarados, of course, bringing that Intimidate, also activating the Find, making sure that the Annihilate will get that plus two. But we see a different lead here, at, to say the very least. We have the Among Us and the Fluttermane on Adam's side, while on uh, on Luca's side, we have the Tinglu and the Fluttermane. Fluttermane already activating its Protosynthesis right now, raising its special attack, meaning it has the possibility to go for a strong move, but the Tinglu on the field kind of preventing you to have that maximum output of damage. Absolutely, and now this Choice Specs Fluttermane is on the field for Adam. It's going to be putting on a fair amount of pressure onto Luca's side of the field, but 
contrary to the usual sets that we see on Ting Lu, that Ting Lu is able to go for a protect here, and as is the flutter main. So you, uh, Luca has the opportunity to just play this a little bit more slowly, see what the flutter main uh, is choosing to opt itself into, and it's opting to choose uh, not to be on the field anymore <laughs> and uh, switching out for that Chi Yu. Yes, and a Ting Lu switching out just as well uh, you have the Chi on the field meaning a lot more damage can happen but the Amungus being on the field and this is a front I mean with substitute possibly meaning it could have gone for a substitute there, making sure that no amount of damage would have uh, like no spore would have been able to go through but the spore going actually into that Amungus slot on that end kind of you know a nice switch in there for the situation for Luca needing the Amungus to block a little bit of spore going on from uh, Adam's side of the field and you know catching the spore on the switch in always looking uh, nice but Adam kind of playing quite proactively in this situation where the Chi Yu comes in as the Amoongus comes in that's exactly what you want where Amoongus would have resisted the Flutterbane from Adam's side of the field now it's feeling uh, a little bit less secure in front of that Chi Yu so I really like how proactive Adam's being and this is the kind of switch up that we needed to take this to a game three. Yes, and we have now, oh, uh, just of uh, the mirror happening, we have Chi Yu and Amoongus being onto the field because Amoongus is always able to just uh, redirect any sort of possible attack so that Chi Yu could set up a massive ball. But Adam just opting immediately to um, switch out his Amoongus yet again, going on the aggressive side here, really, going with, with that heat wave into it's the Amoongus. It's a one-hit knockout. KO there, uh, seeing something that we don't see. It is a critical hit as well. That is what a critical hit. Adam is very... Very happy, I'm sure, to be seeing that right there, as well as being able to do a little bit of damage onto that Chi Yu as well. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a game-changing turn without Flutterman switching in that turn for Adam. There was no extra damage on the field, so that Amoongus really did have the opportunity to go for a Spore into the uh, Fluttermane slot or maybe even try to heal up its partner as well but not this time as that heat wave does pick up the knockout yeah it is just as you said the spore was able to come out but the Fluttermane switching in at the right time now two Chiyu's on the field and a Tinglu meaning this Moonblast with uh, choice packs can definitely still hurt quite a bit we have seen how much uh, a Tinglu does in the take from uh, the earlier moves there and we know it's not an assault vest so it might not it might be deciding to go for that terra making it terra poison so it's no longer hit super effectively at this moment as the farming just switching out again just bring it in threaten and go back <laughs> go back indeed to adam and it's the amoongus going to be joining the field now quite a brave switch in in front of a chi yu but at least you've got that ting lu on the field on luca's Ooh. side that's going to be you know taking a little bit of the edge off of the heat wave on Luca's uh, Chi Yu, but both Chi Yu's uh, plodding away and getting boosts to their special attack stats, making them uh, a little bit more dangerous. But I really feel like the Chi Yu on Luca's side of the field has the advantage here because that Ting Lu is putting on a lot of pressure on its own onto Chi Yu on Adam's side. Yeah, it is just as you said. The, ting, the Chi Yu both really are being just plot it up right now, making sure that the Amoongus is feeling quite threatened as well by a possible heat wave. But that's the thing about Chi Yu, they don't drop each other's special defense, meaning this plus two will definitely matter. And the amount of speed that is invested, the amount of bulk right now, because both Chi Yu's look the same, but they're not completely, probably not trained the same. No, certainly not. We'll have to see the difference in that training in this turn as Fluttermain joins the field for that Ting Lu, effectively powering up the whole of the field right now with removing that Vessels of Ruin ability. Amoongus on Adam's side of the field quite wisely, I think, going for that Terra Water so that it's no longer weak and, in fact, instead resists any Fire-type moves coming out from Luca's Chi Yu. As we see the Rage Powder, just making sure that no Dazzling gl uh, no Dark Pulses, in fact, are going to be coming Ooh. into it this turn, but a Heat Wave is enough to pick up the Knockout with that nasty Plot Boost onto the Flutter Main on the switch in and a Dark Pulse following up to the Amoongus is not enough to pick up the KO. It's If it's not super effective, you're not KOing Amoongus at this point. <laughs> well, it's really crazy at times, unless you crit it as well. We have to just <laughs> see that happen as well. Tinglu 
back on the field. And we now know that Adams uh, Chiu is indeed faster and can get the necessary damage and needed uh, to really pull off uh, quite a lot. Well, just the damage, really. <laughs> well, now that Ting Lu's on the field, the Chi Yu on Adams' side of the field isn't going to be hitting quite as hard as it did before. So a little bit more of a defensive play, which I really do like from both of these trainers, just uh, making sure that they're not going to be falling afoul of the changes in power between all of these Pokemon now. Uh, Ting Lu also going for a protect, though, and going to be protecting itself from a spore coming out from that Amoongus. So not a lot happening on the board, but a lot happening in terms of the way that the board has changed going into this turn. Yeah, now that these Pokemon all have protected, meaning they have a, le a little bit less of a chance to protect a second turn in a row, but the Amoongus itself still threatening the Tinklu with a potential spore. It is low, but you need to KO it if you do not want to fall asleep there. As we have the activation of that Terra type onto the Tinklu this time around, we'll put that Terra Water, meaning it will be able to resist any sort of heat wave coming out from the Chi from Adam's side. Absolutely, and uh, showing why Terra Water is a very relevant uh, choice in this format. As we see the Amoongus going for a Protect Dark Pulse, following up onto the Chi Yu, not enough to pick up the KO. So Chi Yu on Lucas' side of the field will be able to reply with a boosted Heat Wave here. Not going to do too much damage to Chi Yu onto Adam's side of the field, but the follow up on the Stomping Tantrum will pick up the knockout here. Chi Yu will be going back to Adam, uh, Adam and Luca is carving a path towards a win in this match. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Adam now bringing out the Fluttermane. Fluttermane, of course, now the fastest thing on the field. Ting Lu is still active here, uh, being, being able to lower any sort of special uh, de de all the special attack of all the Pokemon. Not really working on itself, but the chi it's quite low the Chi right now, so a Dazzling Leaf would be able to kill it. But on the other hand, that Ting Lu. Kiyoing that will be quite difficult. It certainly will, and you kind of want to leave the Chi Yu on the field if you're Adam here, because that Beads of Ruin makes that Ting Lu a little bit easier to knock out. Protect, though, coming out from that Chi Yu on Lucas' side of the field. Dazzling Gleam on to, uh, uh, from Adam's side of the field and doing a little bit of damage, trying to knock out that Chi Yu first. But Heavy Slam going oh, into that Amoongus oh. with the Rage Powder <laughs> isn't oh. enough to pick up the KO, and Rocky Helmet doing a lot of work there, making a little bit of recall, stopping that Ting Lu from enjoying uh, targeting down that Amoongus. Yes, it was an excellent play to try for Luca. If the Amoongus wasn't going for any sort of Rage Powder, the Heavy Slam would have definitely gone into the following, possibly taking the kill, but the uh, Ting Lu doesn't have Earthquake or any spread kind of moves, so Protect failing from the Chiyu, Rage Powder coming out again from this Amoongus, meaning this Fluttermane is able to go for a Dazzling Gleam yet again onto the Chiyu, is a KO. Now Ting Lu only on the field will have to go for the attack onto that Amoongus, and it will be that Heavy Slam right now, taking another set of that Rocky Helmet damage as well. Yeah, I mean, the Ting Lu has got leftovers, so definitely something that Luku will want to consider using Protect for. Uh, maybe needs a couple of protects here to have any opportunities. Uh, the Beads of Ruin is no longer on the field, so that Ting Lu is a little bit more bulky. But this Dazzling Gleam that Adam has locked into is now hitting single targets. So that's going to mean that this... <laughs> I hadn't realized that there was another Pokemon yeah, left on the field for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> me neither, <either. laughs> So uh, the Iron Bundle coming in, yeah, that's definitely going to lock up the game here for Adam. We're going to be taking it to a game three in round exactly. 14. Well adapted by Adam there. Honestly, I, what I feel what he's done quite well is the adaptation of his following. Keep it in, switch it up. Keep it in, switch it up. Because you <laughs> keep forcing your opponent to think about the possibilities, the power that the Fluttermane can bring to you. So you have to consider the options that, uh, how do I best survive this? How do I treat this? And if you're, uh, instead of attacking with the Fluttermane, instead of predicting any kind of choice lock moves that you have to do, you just switch out and wait for a better moment. Absolutely, because you know, when you're in front of a choice specs Pokemon like Fluttermane, it's it's really easy to fall into the trap of maybe thinking that the Fluttermane is just going to go for an attack because it's putting on so much pressure. You go for a double protect to, to try and scout out what that Fluttermane is going to be locked into so you can react accordingly. Yeah. But Adam playing proactively, knowing that those sort of defensive plays are on the horizon and then just switching that Fluttermane in or out of there yeah. and uh, putting a different threat on the field. And that's... Uh, 
the way that that changes the board state, changes what your opponent's trying to do, is just such a good thing to be able to see. Yes, it's just as you said, Chi will always be uh, threatening with that possibly nasty block there. We see also Luca stalling a bit for time to really think of a plan why he can do the next game. But these opponents are really close to each other level-wise. You can see these players actively trying to read each other, actively trying to see what the other is thinking and doing. It is quite, it is quite a mental game. Or it's quite strong mental game here. Definitely, round 14. We've been playing a lot of Pokemon yesterday. We've played a lot of Pokemon so far today, and these players are showing their resilience by having such an intense and very, very close battle between them. You can see that both players have the tools to be able to come out on top, and it really does come down to the choices that they made and uh, you know the switch-ups they made going into game three because. This is where it's all to play for. You only have one game of Pokemon left to play. If you're going to make a read, if you're going to go for something, now's the time to do it. Exactly. As we are this close to that popular top eight that everyone wants to get into, I feel, what, what as Luca, what is the adaptation that you would do, Ben? I'm wondering about that Iron Hands uh, coming out. I mean, it is carrying uh, the Assault Vest in uh, Luca's team, and that's going to be putting a lot of pressure on the Fluttermane Chi Yu Iron Bundle uh, composition. Uh, not so good if uh, maybe the Annihilate comes to uh, join the field, but certainly a Pokemon that can, uh, you know, put in, a, put in a lot of work if it gets into the right position but also punish Pokemon like that Fluttermane, which are carrying a Choice Scarf, because it is carrying that Volt Switch. And so when you're up against a Choice Specs Fluttermane that you predict to go for a switch out, maybe you go for a cheeky little Volt Switch, see what uh, Adam is switching into, and then uh, choose yourself what Pokemon best meets that threat. Yes, exactly. As uh, You have also Fake Out as well for the nice supporter, as we have the leads here. We have the Chi Yu. Chi Yu, I guess each other looking at each other. Hello, fish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hello, my fellow fish brethren. And the Fluttermane and the Ting Lu on the field. Vessel of Ruin, Beads of Ruin all activated. And so that means it's kind of negated right now the special defense and the special attack from this Fluttermane right now. Fluttermane can still do a lot of damage. It is still choice packs. It is, it is Fluttermane. It is the top most used Pokemon right now. So it's quite important to see how will you deal with this. Heavy Slam seems to be the move of choice here for Luca, and Adam's definitely going to have to be worried about that. But also, Chi Yu has to be a little bit worried because we've seen that that stomping tantrum from Ting Lu does so much. And I feel like Ting Lu is really the centerpiece to Luca's game plan in the whole of this matchup so yeah. far. And a, a worthy choice of Terra as Adam goes on the offensive turn one, going for that Moonblast, not quite doing 50% to this Ting Lu as the Chi Yu on both sides of the field Ooh. heading for that nasty plot, getting themselves set up, putting the pressure onto their opponents. There's a heavy, heavy slam, slam coming in and knocking oh. out that Fluttermane in one. Uh, as earlier, Adam was every time that Fluttermane came in for the first few turns, always switching it out back into, for, let's say, for example, the Amoongus, trying to make sure that this Ting Lu wasn't able to damage it. This time around, just opting no. You might predict that I'm just going to go for damage. And it's not going that well for Adam uh, in that regard. But the Iron Bundle is able to come in and threaten really the Ting Lu, whether or not a freeze dry as well. Uh, on the, and a Hydro Pump onto the Chi as well. So this Iron Bundle actually really looking good. Really looking very, very good indeed. Of course, there is the option for Icy Winds as well. And uh, now that that Chi Yu on both sides of the field have been boosted up, they are going to be big threats. And it's not going to be enough for the Hydro Pump to knock out that Chi Yu. Another nasty plot. Adam is going crazy in this match and being able to uh, boost its way up. But the Focus Sash coming in clutch on that Iron Bundle, not going down to that heat wave from the yeah, Chi Yu. No from the Ting Lu either way <laughs> under the Chi oh the Chi Yu expecting the protect a critical hit on top of as well onto that Chi Yu just putting Adam in such a bad position right now Luca really just making hard calls you're not switching that you're not switching that for me you're not I'm not gonna protect here I am just gonna deal that damage that I want to have
damage is exactly what's been going out on this turn. And yeah, Luca, as you say, making the absolutely correct read. Sometimes you've got to stare down your opponent and see how they're playing and adjust your game to what they've been doing. Of course, Adam doing that at the same time. And uh, where we end up is Luca predicting that Adam's going to hold his ground and try to take advantage of Luca playing a bit more defensively, where Adam instead playing a bit more aggressively as is Luca, but Luca getting the upper end of that. Yeah, I just realized as well, before this game, I mentioned, I want to see a turn one nasty plot. We got two. <laughs> 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 so these players actively adapting to what they might think, what the opponent is thinking in his top process. We do see the activation of the terror type onto the moves, going to put that water terror type, being able to redirect any moves that a Tinglu might be going for just chipping it every time with that Rocky Hammond. And it is mainly this Iron Bundle World that will have to do all the damage as it goes for a Protect right now, meaning this uh, this Amugus is able to go for any sort of damage. The Protect coming out from the Tinglu. Is this a Pollen Puff into that Chi Yu slot? Heat Wave coming out. How much will it do against this Terra Water Amugus right now? Quite a bit, I'm, I'm sure, effectively uh, not resisted there, doing, you know, a good amount of chip damage, but the Spore does go into that Ting Lu. Another correct prediction there from Luca, and another turn of leftovers, making that Ting Lu feel a little bit better. Now, Luca in this position has a little bit more control of the board here, where uh, there's a Chi Yu on Luca's side of the field. It, yeah, it's got the nasty plot boost up, but that look, that nasty plot boost has already done what it needs to do. You kind of want to make sure that the uh, Ting Lu on your side of the field, if you're Luca, is surviving the turn, and uh, maybe it's a good idea to switch that Chi Yu out, but no switches this turn, just a Raid Powder coming out from that Amoongus. Yeah, just opting to go for a freeze right into the Chi Yu, not wanting to risk any sort of misses with the icy wind or even hydro pumps there killing that stop it coming out from the tinglu into that mungus doing a bit of damage and also the tinglu taking a bit of rocky helmet damage now it is gonna be interesting to see because luca only has shown two pokemon really right now what does he have in the back to be able to deal with this mungus and this iron bundle well, the Amoongus is coming out for Luca, and an interesting position that we haven't yet seen, or at least I haven't seen so far in this tournament, where Amoongus on Adam's side of the field is now a water type, and that makes it susceptible to both Rage Powder from Luca's uh, Amoongus, but also it can be spored now, which yeah. is something that we don't see all too often. Freeze right into the Amoongus. It's not doing that much damage, but you can get, of course, a possible freeze. Uh, Luca very happy not getting a freeze, eating the Amoongus, he eating its citrus berry, healing a bit more. Stomp the Tanner coming out inside of that uh, Iron Bundle, critical <laughs> hit on top with a nice bow there. Uh, going down, meaning only the Amoongus is left here on the field for Adam's side. Going for the Spore inside uh, onto the opposing Amoongus from Adam, putting it asleep as you mentioned. And now it's only a sleepy Amoongus on the field. Somewhat poetic, isn't it? That the uh, Amoongus is finally taking its turn to go for a nap instead of uh, letting everybody else go for a nap. It's been, it's stayed awake for quite a while yeah. so far. Lots of games in VGC, but now it's uh, finally taking its turn to have a little bit of a rest. Exactly, and the battle is kind of, that means Luca has won this Swiss round five. Right now, congratulations to Luca. Well played as well, Adam. It was quite a game to behold. and. It's just that way of playing where you are in the moment where you have to adapt, slow play sometimes, and sometimes just decide, no, this is the moment I have decided to immediately go for that offense, really, to just make sure that your opponent is in a bad position. Exactly. Those sort of reads that Adam is making, it was making in game two, to bring it to a game three were fantastic and really showed how he was able to change the board state to his favor. But that doesn't work every time. You know, when your opponent cottons on to what you're going to be doing and the kind of strategies that you're trying to implement, you kind of have to switch it up as well. And you have to, you know, move with the next yeah. game and the next game. And certainly in game three, where it's all to play for, where you only have one opportunity to uh, to defeat your opponent, you've got to get those turns absolutely right, and that's exactly what Luca did. Yeah, it's, it's just as you said. That was 
immaculately played. It was well played, it was well done. The other two games were also amazing to behold because it was a bit more of that slow game where the game two with the Chiu Nasi plot, uh, which Adam had a bit of the upper hand because it had mm. a somewhat faster Chiu being able to deal the, the, as much damage as it needed. The critical hit onto that movies was also very nice, let's not forget that. Yes. But uh, on the other hand, the first game where Luca was really playing, the Ting Lu. As you said, the Tinglu is the one thing that you had to really play around. It was because, you know, it's dropping the special attack of those Pokemon on Adam's side of the field. So really a relevant Pokemon for anything that Adam could be using. And technically uh, weakening the Amoongus as well. Uh, yeah. You know, if we're if we're c counting everything that it could be doing, uh, <laughs> you know, giving giving it all of its dues here. Um, yeah. But the uh, but but that's what makes it so effective and and why uh, players have gravitated to bringing that in these sort of balanced compositions because both we saw it using Heavy Slam, using Stomping Tantrum to knock out Fluttermane and Chi Yu, two of the more common Pokemon, certainly the Fluttermane, uh, in this regulation set C format, but also slow them down at the same time. And you, you know, you ca almost can't ask for much more. Yeah, exactly. It's just as you, it's exactly as you said, because Chi Yu, a flood main. It's an amazing lead. It's powerful. It's strong. It's fast. But Ting Lu is just sitting there and saying, "You know what? I'll hit you both super effectively and call it a day." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I really want to point out the uh, throwback to game one where Lucas Gyarados did so much work as yeah. well. We didn't really see it too much, uh, or at all, in fact, in games two and three. It kind of came in the early game, maybe forced Adam uh, to adjust to the Gyarados just being there because it's fun to wave targeting was so so good getting that iron bundle on the switch in instead of that Amoongus really gave Chi Yu on Luca's side of the field yeah. a lot of room to maneuver and attack into that uh, iron bundle without fear that it was going to be knocked out first yeah it's uh, the, the speed control on that regard with the Gyarados is very nice and uh, the main thing that you have to fear is that iron bundle because freeze dry of course being quite effective, well, super duper effective. Obviously, <laughs> super, duper it's super duper effective. Duper effective. <laughs> it's four times it's super, it's duper <laughs> uh, effective onto the Gyarados, making sure that it will, would have gone down to that. And the Gyarados being able to provide nice support, but I feel like Gyarados uh, not really the best, uh, especially if you have something like the Annihilate possibility that could come, because mm. I mentioned it after, between games one and two, where yes, I you did, really yeah. thought yeah. that Annihilate could actually pose a very big threat there. And that's a really good observation about how Luca changed it up, saw that the Annihilate wasn't in game one from Adam's side of the field, and then decided, ooh, what if the Annihilate comes yeah, to yeah. games two minute. or games three? Like, let, let's not play that game. Yeah, Instead, yeah. Let's, uh, let's try to do something else. And, uh, you know, boosting up with those nasty plots as well, I think, Maybe we could have seen a little bit of a different game free if Adam had made a slightly different decision there, not going yeah. for that second nasty plot, maybe a two plus dark pulse into that Ting Lu. Yeah, you it could have been enough. It could have done damage because Moonblast did what? Like around 40%? About, around 40. 40%. So a plus two Chi Yu with dark pulse is strong. Uh, it could, if it got the possible kill, you also, uh, if not, you had the possible addition of that flinch as well, which is always an option to have. It's why Dark Pulse is also a good move as well. <laughs> it's decently strong and it has that flinch chance. So. Uh, these players have got to be aware of those secondary effects, yeah. of course. Not the, you, you, you know, you want to be playing these turns as well as you can and not relying on yeah. those secondary effects, but you're absolutely right. They do exist and they are, you know, a little bit of a fallback. Sometimes you have to go for them and <laughs> like we always say, uh, where there's a rock slide, there's, there's a way. A Maybe way. where there's a dark pole, sometimes there's a way as there's well. There's also a smaller way, but still a way. <laughs> <laughs> it's because uh, the double nasty plot was a prediction based. Adam wanted to make because the Tinglu was maybe gonna protect because it already had taken that damage and the Iron Metal being on the field, freeze dry and dark pulse would have definitely been able to kill it. So just ignoring that, just being thinking like, yes, you are absolutely, you're right, that can happen. But what if you do click it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And those are the, the sort of reads that Adam made. I think that's that's a really good point there because both of these players were trying to make observations. They were trying to, uh, you know, 
play as well as they could in that game three. They were both making reads about what the opponent was doing, yeah. uh, but it was Luca that was on the front foot all the way through that game three. We're going to be hearing a little bit more about that from Luca himself with Shona on the couch. So Shona, take it away. Thank you, Ben, so much for that introduction. I am here with the winner of the last match, Luca. Luca, congratulations. You're in top eight. <laughs> how, how are you feeling? Oh, uh, yeah, there's definitely no words to describe how happy I am. Like, you can see it was uh, the last round was uh, a nail biter. Like, you see, uh, I think you've seen by my hair. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was super stressful. But I'm very lucky to be able to come out on top, uh, especially against Adam, who I played against also in Malmo. And uh, it, they, even back then, I think it was uh, easily like one of the best best of three I played in the tur in the tournament. And uh, also, I I can probably say this as well. Uh, it's been very fun to play against him. Yeah, uh, that, really that match well. also uh, you. I feel like both of you in the first game were playing very passively. Like we saw a lot of protect from, you know, both Pokemon on one side of the field. And then I feel like in the third game, though, you suddenly switched from that passive play style to that very aggressive play style. And I, do you think, like, was that kind of the game plan going into game three? Uh, to be honest, in game three, I <laughs> just, uh, once I saw the Flutter main and Chiyu lead, I'll say, okay, um, the position isn't looking very good, so I think I have to uh, make some calls. Uh, obviously, like all the time uh, against uh, Adam, um, I you see I always protected first the Tinglu, so I thought that this time he will try to uh, punish me as hard as he could with uh, um, with like maybe even a Terra Moon Blast on Tucci you just to do some to do a lot of damage onto it and, prob and uh, probably the nasty plot. And so I thought, uh, at this point, uh, really it's all or nothing. I have to uh, react. I, this time I'm gonna switch and be aggressive. And also, it was uh, it was like that also in the second turn where uh, my opponent uh, used the nasty plot a second time. Uh, there I thought that I had um, a shot at leaving the dark pools. Uh, on second thought, I think probably not, but uh, like. Uh, luckily, like I played uh, aggressive enough that uh, I was able to punish uh, the second nasty block. Yeah, plot. no, that was very, very well played, especially that third game. We were all very impressed watching uh, backstage, of course. So um, we we are at the last event in Europe for this season, and you have been the champion of the Turin special event before, just a few years ago. So are you looking to kind of reclaim that title this year? Well, obviously, like. Now there's only three matches left, so uh, there's really no point in not uh, giving a shot. Also, like this is uh, the second time I actually made it to top eight uh, to a major event, and obviously the last time was uh, the Turin special back in 2017. So I'm really happy I was able to repeat uh, the top cut here. Let's see now if I am able to repeat uh, the, the championship. Also. Yeah, no, I think players in top eight will definitely have to watch out for you. You'll definitely be, you know, a threat. <laughs> so, uh, and will you also be at Worlds? Like, do you have your invites secured yet? Yeah, uh, I yeah, had my invites secured uh, uh, a couple months ago. Now, with the points I get here, uh, obviously I'll try to get even more. Mm -hmm. uh, I should be in a good spot, I think, for the um, Travel Award to Yokohama. Unfortunately, if uh, I'm not able to get the top 16 spot, um, I think I, I won't be able to go, but uh, at this point it's all in my hands, right? If I... Uh, probably I can still... Uh, uh, be in top 16 even if I lose in top 8, but uh, uh, if I win more and more, uh, there is definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, so at yeah. this point, it's all in my hands and I have to be the, um, uh, no, I have to I, be I really, I really hope in charge that we of my do own get destiny. to see you there because, you know, you're, you're such a talented player and you've been around for quite a while. So I think you'd really deserve it. And, you know, I think we'd all love to see you compete there. So I, I definitely wish you the best of luck with that. So um, we are actually going to head into a very short break. And after that, we will start heading into our top eight matches. So stay tuned. Ciao.